I mean, who can ever imagine something like this, right? It just, you know, I, I know I couldn't. And um, I, I'm just, I, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm so honored. And um, I feel like uh, this represents uh, a recognition of some foundational work that was started at Berkeley on my side and was a, an international collaboration from the beginning with Emmanuel Charpentier. Um, and um, and our, our, our students, uh, uh, Chris Chylinski in Emmanuel's lab and Martin Yinnick in my group, so a truly international uh, partnership. And, um, you know, it really was a curiosity driven project from the beginning. And I want to also mention that for me, uh, my introduction to CRISPR was Jillian Banfield at Berkeley, who had uh, done some of the early work to uncover this pathway in bacteria. She brought CRISPR to my attention because she thought that it would be an interesting system to study. And boy, was she right. Um, you know, and Jill continues to be a, a wonderful partner and collaborator. And we have now have uh, been able to relocate our laboratories into the same building at, at Berkeley in the IGIB building, which is great. And I, um, you know, it's, it's, she's the type of person that represents what's best about Berkeley. It's just incredible scholarship, you know, colleagues who are deeply passionate about their work, about their students. Um, you know, she's teaching a course right now. Uh, she has to had, had to convert everything to online. And, you know, I know that's been really hard, but she, you know, she relishes it. I mean, this is what we, what we do. Anyhow, um, yeah, so complete, complete shock and, and just um, humble. I'm humbled by it. You know, I just, for little old me to win the prize, I mean, it's just astounding. <laughs> How'd you find out? I was uh, really deeply asleep and um, I got a call. My phone was, uh, I had it on silent actually. My phone was uh, buzzing and for some reason I, I woke up and I looked at the phone. It was 2.53 and uh, it, was, it was Heidi Ledford who is a reporter who I, I know, I've talked to in the past at, at Nature. And I, so I answered the phone and she said, Hi Jennifer, it's Heidi. I'm sorry to you know bother you early, but I just you know wanted to get your comments about the Nobel. And I said, and I thought she was calling to ask me to comment on somebody else winning the Nobel Prize. And I, you know, I was just so I was so deeply asleep, and I just you know I was rubbing my eyes and thinking, okay, I've got to get on my computer and find out who won the Nobel Prize. And and I said, well, who who won it? And she said, well, you won it. <laughs> she said, you mean you haven't talked to them yet? And I said, no. And she said, oh my gosh, I'm the one to tell you. And I said, yes. <laughs> And, um, and so I, I said, Heidi, I, I feel like I'm sorry. I need to go. I need to try to get some official news. And I looked at my phone, and sure enough, there were a bunch of um, messages that I, you know, from the uh, Sweden. <laughs> and uh, uh, then while I was looking at that, my phone rang again, and it was Martin Yinek uh, calling for me from Switzerland, where he runs a lab now. And uh, he was just very, very nice. He was over the moon. He said, I'm just so happy and so excited for you and Emmanuel. And, you know, it's just really wonderful news. And of course, I'm deeply proud of Martin and his work and, you know, how indebted I am to, to him for being in my lab and, and, and doing this wonderf wonderful work together. So it was great to talk with him at that moment, uh, for sure. And, and then, you know, things just started to go crazy. With <laughs> Phone, yeah. <laughs> I think that it, it really speaks to the fact that um, I think for many women, there's a feeling that no matter what they do, their work will never be recognized the way it would be if they were a man. And this recognition today, I think, just you know, refutes that in a way, and and it, it just honors the work that you know was started by by a collaboration between two women. And um, you know who set out not to not to win the Nobel Prize, but to do really fundamental science that we thought was exciting and important and interesting, and we led our our teams to work on it collaboratively, and that just means a lot to me. And and I think it it means a lot to me thinking back to my own uh, childhood. You know, growing up uh, as a you know I, I had been told uh, uh, more than more than a few times that you know girls girls don't do chemistry or girls don't do science. And uh, fortunately, I ignored that. I'm deeply committed to democratizing technology and, and certainly CRISPR-Cas so that it's available and accessible to people that need it, whether it's for biomedical uses or for um, agricultural uses uh, or, or anything else, you know, research, of course. Um, and I, I guess if, if, if this prize changes any of that, I guess it, um, 
it sort of underscores that um, there's a there's a an importance to, to uh, fundamental science that can really change, it, you know, fundamental science can change the world. I think this is a message that needs to get out there because in many cases we hear the opposite. We hear that, you know, why aren't scientists, you know, why aren't we curing cancer? Why aren't we, um, you know, working on very focused problems? And it's not that that isn't important, but the message here is that solutions to, to problems come from unexpected directions, and that's that's really the message of CRISPR, you know. And it's it's a, I think it's a, you know, it's a really important um, message to get out to young people, especially who are thinking about a career in science. And I always encourage students to pursue their their passions because uh, we don't know where the next you know big discoveries and technologies are going to come from. And uh, who knew that uh, you know a bacterial immune system would in fact uh, emerge as a a world-changing technology for gene editing, but here we are. <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, it's still a very young technology. Um, we're eight years into it, and uh, incredibly, there already are clinical trials ongoing uh, using it, and um, more and more opportunities to to deploy it in in uh, agricultural applications and and for other things. So, I think we'll just continue to see the field accelerating from from here. Um, for myself, you know, I think I think continuing to do very fundamental work on the technology, understanding the mechanism of how it works, that's always what I've what I've enjoyed doing and what what I like to do. Plus, I think it's critical to ensure that the technology is used safely and effectively. Under, we've seen this over and over that when we understand how molecules work, uh, we can you know think uh, uh, properly about how to make sure that they work. In, in the way one wants, especially as a technology. So, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. How are you feeling right now? I am feeling um, a combination of emotions. I'm, 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 I'm finding myself reflecting back on many events in the past, you know, just uh, my, my upbringing, um, my, um, you know, my sisters, uh, I talked to one of them today, the other one I haven't talked to yet, but, um, and, uh, you know, who is very proud, and, um, you know, my parents have passed away, so they're not, you know, wherever they are, they're, you know, um, looking down, I'm sure, and, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about um, my college experience, you know, uh, being trained by a female uh, biochemist, Sharon Panasenko, at, at Pomona College, who was truly inspirational to me, and, um, um, and then just my mentors over the years who have been so supportive because that's that's critical for anybody but you know certainly for me uh, helping to build my confidence in myself as a scientist that's that's been key so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of you know flashbacks going on and I guess the other thing I'm thinking about is um, you know I'm just thinking about my son and and sort of people at his age you know it's a it's a challenging time right now for young people and uh, I don't know to what extent young people pay that much attention, honestly, to Nobel Prize announcements. Um, I'm not sure I would have at, at 17, but you know, I think for maybe for girls especially, you know, this is kind of a moment to take a step back from the the craziness that's going on and and just to kind of enjoy, you know, enjoy enjoy great science and and, and you know the process of discovery because that's that's why I've always done science. I'm just so proud of Berkeley. Um, it's it's wonderful. I, I you know I'm really honored to to represent such a great university and couldn't have done the work without being here. I, I don't think it would have happened if I wasn't at Berkeley, honestly. Um, you know just because uh, of all of the circumstances. Certainly my interaction with Julian Banfield uh, being the, the 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 start of all of this. But then you know having the good fortune to attract wonderful people to the lab and to have so many incredible colleagues. I mean we've done so many uh, collaborative uh, projects over the years with, with people at Berkeley. And, you know, I still, I've been at Berkeley 18 years, and I, I still occasionally have this feeling, like I'll go to, go to a seminar, I'll go, I'll go to some, not so much these days, we're not uh, doing it in person, but, you know, just events where I'm looking around the room or the Zoom room with, with colleagues, and I, I'll just have this momentary, oh my gosh, I am part of this, you know, and these people are all, every single one of them is an incredible scholar and, I'm so honored to be here. I just, I, I you know, I, I still have that really deep, you know, feeling of being very, very proud of, of this university. And you're also yeah. very proud of your students and the students. I am. They give you a lift. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I mean, they do. I mean, my students are, are what, you know, 
keep me keep me going, uh, you know, and, and uh, I'm just incredibly, incredibly um, honored to be part of all of this.